Okay, so in this video, we are going to learn about homomorphisms of groups and talk about uh, when two groups are same. Okay, so let us start with this definition of the of a group homomorphism. So, let G and G prime be two groups. So, I am going to write the definition uh, and then we will discuss some examples. So, let G and G prime be two groups. So, this is the definition. A homomorphism of groups. So, it is a homomorphism of groups is a function. So, usually we denote this by phi. Okay, so, this is read as phi. Phi is a function from G to G prime. It is a set theoretic function first of all. It is a function from G to G prime such that it satisfies the following condition. Phi of A B is equal to phi of A times phi of B. That is all. So, we want phi of A B equals phi of A times phi of B. Okay, so, let us uh, just recall our convention here. When I write A B, remember this is for all what are A and B you have to ask. This is true for all A and B in G. So, A and B are elements of the group G, the domain group and in the bracket here I have A B which means A times B in the group G. I apply the binary operation of the group G to A and B. Phi of A and phi of B are elements of the group G prime and here I write phi of A times phi of B and that really means that I am applying the group operation of G prime. So, the left hand side group operation is on of G is being used and right hand side group operation of G prime is used. Okay? So, let us keep this in mind. So, it is not any set function, but a set function which satisfies this. So, a good way to remember this is to say this is a <coughs> set fun function which satisfies or which respects the group operations of G and G prime. Whether you multiply first, so this is the way you should think of this. Whether you multiply first in the group G and then apply phi or you apply phi first and then multiply in the group G prime, you get the same answer. This is what a group homomorphism is. Okay, so, whether you multiply first and then apply G or apply G F phi, sorry, multiply and then apply phi is same as apply phi and then multiply. So, multiply and apply phi. Remember when I use the word multiply, I, I really use it uh, to stand for the binary operation of the group G. It is not multiplication of ordinary integers or rational numbers, right? because G is an arbitrary abstract group. So, multiply is just a convenient word to indicate the binary operation. So, multiply and apply phi that is what we have done in the left hand side is same as apply phi and multiply. which is what we have done on the right hand side. We applied phi first and then multiplied. So, we started with A and B. We first multiplied them and then applied phi to get phi of A B. On the right hand side, we have apply phi first to A and B separately and then multiply. So, a group homomorphism is one where these two operations are going to give you the same answer. Okay, so, let us start with some uh, after the definition, let us look at some basic examples and before we continue study the properties of group homomorphisms. Okay, let us look at some examples. Um, if you look at, uh, okay, so let us look at this example. Let us look at our group that we have studied in detail, the group of integers. Again, when I write z, 
and do not say what the operation is it's understood that the operation is addition so for example let's say i take an integer a and multiply by so you fix an integer n and i define phi of a to be n times a so this is nothing but a plus a plus a n times is this a group homomorphism is this a group homomorphism let's check so remember what is it that we have to check we have to check that if you apply the binary operation first and then if you perform the binary operation and then apply phi it should be same as applying the by ap apply the function and then perform the binary operation so in this example it amounts to checking we want to check a and b are two integers you want to check that after adding them and then applying uh, phi or first applying phi and then adding this should be true for all integers a and b right but uh, in order to check this let's just individually calculate them what is phi of a plus b by definition phi of a is n times a so phi of a plus b is simply n times a plus b phi of a is n a and phi of uh, sorry this is actually b right phi of a plus b should be phi of a plus phi of b and phi of b is n b so is n of n times a plus b equal to n a plus n b yes so is this a group homomorphism yes okay so this is a group homomorphism so this is a good example of a group homomorphism multiplying by a fixed integer n okay let's look at another example so let's say i consider phi so let's maybe i i'll keep using the word uh, letter phi for all these homomorphisms let's say i have 1 minus 1 i take this to be g prime we have not seen this uh, explicitly before but is this a group is g prime a group it is under our usual multiplication right because uh, one is the identity element one is the identity element right and minus 1 is the second element minus 1 squared is uh, minus 1 squared is 1 minus 1 times 1 is minus 1 and so on so this is really g prime is actually a subgroup if you think about it of let's say rational numbers under multiplication so i'll i'll make that note here and it's for you to check note that g prime is a subgroup subgroup of q star if you recall q star is the group of non zero rational numbers under multiplication so this is g prime is just a subgroup of it so i need to identify g prime as a group right in order to talk of group homomorphisms we need two groups we know that z is a group and now i'm considering the group 1 minus 1 that's a group so what is a map phi so let's uh, define the map phi so define phi of a to b so we have two um cases so let's define it to be 1 if a is even so if a is even i define phi of a to be 1 and let's say if a is odd i define it to be minus 1 so phi of a is simply going to keep track of whether number a is odd or even if it's even we send it to 1 if it's odd we send it to minus 1 so it's uh, a function from the integers to the set 1 minus 1 is this a is this a group homomorphism is phi a group homomorphism
So again, remember one, one has to check that phi of a plus b should be equal to phi of a plus okay so now this is a good example because it will make you deal with the notation that we have been using so far if you go back and see the definition of a group homomorphism i should say phi of a b equals phi of a times phi of b but remember i have clarified at that point that the multiplication here is whatever is a binary operation in the group that we are dealing with so in this example we have z on the left hand side which is a group under addition and g prime which is 1 comma minus 1 which is a group under multiplication so in the definition we have to check that phi of a b is phi of a times phi of b right this is what we have to check but in this specific example the left hand side is actually phi of a plus b because the binary operation here is a plus b the addition should be equal to and what is the binary operation on the right hand side it is just the multiplication so it is phi of a times phi of b is this true for all a comma b in z let's check this note that the image of phi is either 1 or minus 1 depending on whether a is even or odd so let's take two even numbers so let's say are both even if they are both even phi of a equals phi of b equals 1 because if both are even they both go to 1 and note that then a plus b is also even so phi of a plus b is also 1 if uh, two even numbers are added to each other we also get an even number we again get an even number so phi of a plus b is 1 and remember then this condition is satisfied so phi of a plus b is phi of a times phi of b because this is 1 and this is 1 times 1 so this is okay on the other hand if a and b are both odd then what do we have then phi of a and phi of b are both minus 1 but if a and b are both odd what is a plus b sum of two odd numbers is even so a plus b is even then what is a phi of a plus b that's 1 again this condition is satisfied right because phi of a plus b is 1 phi of a times phi of b is minus 1 times minus 1 so this is again okay so if both are odd also phi of a plus b equals phi of a times phi of b right now let us check uh, the other case so if a is even and b is odd let us say in this case what happens so we have phi of a is 1 phi of b is minus 1 because a is even and b is odd a plus b is odd right a is a multiple of 2, b is not a multiple of 2, when you add you will not get a multiple of 2. So, a plus b is odd. So, a phi of a plus b is minus 1. Again, remember the function is odd numbers go to minus 1 and even numbers go to 1. So, in this case again we have phi of a plus b is phi of a times phi of b because this is minus 1 and this is 1 and this is minus 1. So, this is okay. Okay, so similarly if a is odd b is even you can uh, check that the same condition holds so so phi is a group homomorphism okay so the function which sends an integer to 1 or minus 1 depending on whether it is even or odd is a group homomorphism okay so the next obvious example would be to consider so this is probably 3 is uh, the function the previous function modified slightly so let us keep the same groups z and 1 minus 1 but now send a to uh, minus 1 if a is even 1 if a is odd 
okay so I, I have interchanged the previous function so here I sent even numbers to 1 odd numbers to minus 1 now I have sent I'm sending even numbers to minus 1 odd numbers to 1 is phi a group homomorphism is phi a group homomorphism I will leave this as an exercise for you it is a very easy exercise you can check that it is not a group homomorphism you can produce two numbers which violate the definition of a group homomorphism okay. so this is an example of a function which is not a group homomorphism so uh, let me not do anything uh, about this solution because I would like you to try to do this on your own one more example let us uh, recall uh, G L N R. So, I do not know if I use the same notation before. Um, let me use G this notation here G L N R. So, uh, maybe I have used some other notation in the past, but the set G L N R remember stands for all invertible n by n real matrices under multiplication ok so we take all invertible matrices which have size n by n and which have real entries and I make it a group by multiplication because now every matrix in this set has an inverse because it is invertible product of two invertible matrices is invertible and inverses exist by definition and so on the uh, multiplication of matrices is associative identity is there so it is a group this is a group under multiplication now we all know what determinants of functions are so I consider the determinant function so let us take uh, phi from g l n r to non zero real number so i take a matrix a and i define phi of a to be determinant of a so which is simply written dit a so dit a is the function which sends a to determinant of a this is a function so is phi a group homomorphism now first of all in before you even attempt to answer this question you have to ask yourself what are the two groups involved i just recall for you what is glnr okay glnr is the group of all invertible n by n real matrices under multiplication but what is r star r star is all non zero real numbers also under multiplication right so this is also a group uh, that we have seen before if you take non zero real, real numbers and may consider the binary operation given by multiplication it's a group so now i can ask is phi a group homomorphism it's a function from one group to another group and the answer is yes and uh, uh, it follows from the properties if you have seen matrices before properties of the determinant what do, what do we have to check we have to check again remember the definition of a group homomorphism is phi of a b should be same as phi of a times phi of b i am going to use the uh, letters capital a capital b because uh, those that's more standard to denote matrices by capital a capital b remember again i i recall for you the definition of a group homomorphism is phi of a b must equal phi of a times phi of b so is this true yes because what is phi of a b this is determinant of a b and what is phi of a times phi of b this is determinant of a times determinant of b and if you have studied uh, matrix theory before and when you study determinants one of the first properties that you will see is that dt a 
b is equal to determinant of a times determinant of b this is a property of determinant so this is a well known property of determinants so because uh, this is a well known property of determinants phi is a group homomorphism so this is an important example of a group homomorphism so let's uh, look at one more example so five in my counting so let's say g is an arbitrary group so i i am going to take any group and fix an element change fix an element change consider the following function from the group of integers to g which sends c of a to sorry c of uh, now because i used a for the group element let me use n for the integer c of n to b i define it to be a power n remember again a power n stands for a star a star k n types so i am applying the binary operation of our group g to a n types so this is c of n equals a power n now is this a group homomorphism so again remember the definition is c of n plus n because the group z is under addition we have to check c of n plus n should be equal to c of m times c of n because that's the group operation on g my notation is just cm times cn so i don't write star unless i want to emphasize a point here so is this true but what is c of m plus n this is a power m plus n by definition of c m plus n goes to a power m plus n this is true and what is c of m times c of n this is a power m times a power n okay so now the question is is this true is a power m plus n equal to a power n dot a power n and the answer is yes this is true and this came up in uh, some of the work that we have done in the past when we worked out some examples or looked at some uh, properties of uh, multiplication so i am not going to spend a lot of time doing this but uh, quickly i will do this what is this this is a star a star a m plus n times and this is first i will do a star a m times and then i do star note that i am using dot and star interchangeably here in the second we have n times okay so we have a star a star a m plus n times and here m times and then star n times but this is uh, if you use uh, associativity of group operation and expand this out you have to do first a here and then so you take this and do this a power n so this is remember a power n so this is a power n plus or rather i should use i'm using the distributive property the associative property so then you have another a so our a power n like that and this is m times so this is a n plus 1 star a n plus 1 star n plus 1 so if you keep doing this one by one you get a power m plus n okay so this is an exercise for you to check this so check this as an exercise okay so i remarked this on this earlier when i use exponential notation i can use the usual properties of exponents that you have studied about real numbers and integers and rational numbers so this will go through okay so this is uh, this is a group homomorphism so let us do one more example 
and then we will study some properties. Now fix again a group. But assume now that it is abelian. So, what is an abelian group? Recall G is abelian if AB equals BA for all AB in G. Okay, so any two elements in G commute with each other. So, this is an abelian group. Okay. So now I consider the map free from G to G which sends A to A square. Okay. So what am I doing? I am taking an element A and I am simply squaring it. Is this a group homomorphism? Is this a group homomorphism? So we have to check remember check phi of a b should equal phi of a times phi of b let's just write both sides of this equation what is phi of a b this is a b squared right that is a definition send any element to its squared and what is this this is a squared times b squared phi of a b is a b whole squared phi of a times phi of b is a squared times b squared now are these two equal and here is where we have to use the abelian hypothesis so let's just write it down so a b whole squared is a b a b right this is the definition of a b whole squared a b then a b because the group is associative so i'm going to just uh, um, remove the brackets and write this as a b a b what is a squared b squared this is a a because that's what a squared is times b b so again i'll remove uh, bracket so this is a a b b see there is no reason in general that this these two are equal in general these are not equal But note that we are in an abelian group. I am starting with an abelian group. So, A, A, B, B, I can interchange in any way I want. So, I can interchange the middle two elements. That is A, B, A, B. So, if I interchange this, because A, B equals B, A, I have noted that A, B equals B, A for all A, B. A, B equals B, A. So, this is A, B times A, B. So, this is true. So, the map which sends a to a squared is a group homomorphism if the group is abelian. So now the question naturally arises is phi a group homomorphism when G is not abelian? Okay, so is this a group homomorphism when G is not abelian? Note that our uh, proof here suggests that it need not be, right? Because in general, we may not be able to come interchange A and B here. But unless we get an example, we can't be sure. Just because uh, the proof that we are trying to give here does not work in the non-abelian case, the statement itself is wrong for non-abelian case, you, you cannot say that. Maybe there is some other proof. Okay? So unless you give an example where this is not a group homomorphism when G is not a billion, you can't conclusively settle this question. So, in order to understand this, think of the groups that you know that are not a billion. The simplest such group is S3. So, consider, remember that in an exercise in an earlier video, we have shown that any group of order up to 5 is a billion. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is a billion. And hence, G3, uh, S3, which has six elements, is the smallest non-abelian group. And in the notation that I introduced uh, way back in one of the first videos, I use these letters to denote the elements here. These are all bijections of the set 1, 2, 3 to itself. 
S3 is always the set of bijections from 1 to 3 to 1 to 3. So now consider the map from S3 to S3. I, I map Fi, phi sends Fi to Fi squared for every i from 1 to 6. Right, so one goes to f1 goes to f1 squared, f2 goes to f2 squared, and so on. So now I want you to check as an exercise here, and this is a straightforward exercise. It's a good way to uh, again remind yourselves about the group operation of S3. Phi is not a group homomorphism. Okay, so you can check that phi is not a group homomorphism. Um, for example, uh, um, maybe I will just quickly tell you how to check this. If you recall f2, uh, so I will recall for you from the first uh, video, f2 sends 1 to 2, 2 to 1, 3 to 3 and f3 sends 1 to 3, 2 to 2, 3 to 1. So where does f2, f3 go? So let's do this. If you multiply f2 and f3, 1 goes to, so first you send 1 to 3, then 3 to 3. So 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 2, and then 2 goes to 1. 3 goes to 1 and 1 goes to 2. So is this clear? So f2 was this, f3 was uh, this, and f2, f3 is this. And this, if you recall again the notation that I developed in the uh, video where I discussed this in detail, this is same as uh, 1 goes to 3, 2 goes to 1, 3 goes to 2. So the, in the notation is f6. Okay, so f2, f3 is f6. So now, if, if uh, this is a group homomorphism, we want, and uh, where does f2 go under phi? Now, this is f2 squared. We, we check that f2 is actually an order 2 element in when we discussed orders of elements of a group. So f2 squared is f1. Similarly, f3 is also an order 2 element. So phi of f3 is f3 squared and that is 1, uh, namely f1, the identity element. Okay. On the other, so in other words, phi of f2 times f3 is uh, phi of f2, f3 is f of 6, phi of f6 is f6 squared and f6 is an order 3 element of s3, so this is not f1. On the other hand, phi of f2 times phi of f3 is uh, f1 times f1 which is f1, okay. So phi of f2, f3 is not equal to phi of f2, phi of f3. Okay, so I have actually checked the, all the details here. You have a non abelian group where the multiplication uh, squaring is not a group homomorphism. So, this exercise is completely checked. However, if the group is abelian, you have that it is a group homomorphism. Okay, so I will stop the video now, this video. In the next video, we are going to study some basic properties of group homomorphisms and learn more about subgroups attached to group homomorphisms. Thank you.